So good, an good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to uh, now have some live coding and uh, mostly, I guess, it's development operations, as I'm only kind of uh, doing the configuration, so I'm not actually changing any of the code. But I'm Jussi Kinnola, and I've been working with Frantic uh, with uh, WordPress-related stuff and also Angular-related stuff for three years now. And uh, I've also helped other developers to Im incre increase the productivity, and this multi-site thing is one of those. One of to to those topics that somebody wanted to have multi-sites. I don't know if there is really business reasons to have multi-sites, maybe blogs and kind of sub-sites. It's kind of nice to have more granularity on the admins and so on, but well, it's it's a business case that if somebody wants a multi-site, then they want to have it. So let's just uh, get our hands dirty. Uh, you should note that my presentation is in form that when you uh, download it or look it from the internet, you can follow up all my steps. You only need to create a Heroku account and you are ready to go and make your own multi-site. So let's start. So this is basically describing that uh, what are the prerequisites that these, uh, these instructions are using. So we use on Frantic uh, only Macs. I heard today that some, some people are using Windows. No offense for Windows. I don't really know that if uh, these tools would actually work on Windows, but maybe. At least they work on Linux, so I've seen uh, loads of Heroku and also this deployment guys written for Linux. And this is uh, based on this bedrock. So the bedrock is the way to go on cloud deployment and it, uh, its uh, structure is a li little bit different that you have used on WordPress, but it really works, works on, at least on our case. And these uh, uh, modifications for the bedrock, it's uh, open source, so we have uh, uh, made it publicly available, so I didn't create a minimal fork to my own GitHub, I just used the one that uh, we are using on Frantic. Um, it's freely usable by anybody, so li like the other open, <coughs> open source or WordPress stuff. So regularly you just install the stuff and it works, so, so in our case the uh, Homebrew makes it very easy to make. You just install the correct stuff, like libraries and MySQL and PHP stuff and, and others. Composer is important on our case, as this uh, uh, bedrock is kind of built that all that you have on the WordPress are Composer plugins. And you use Pagagist or uh, Wpagagist repositories to get the stuff, so you don't actually update anything regularly with this VP admin. You will just bump the versions and, and push it uh, to cloud with this Composer log file updated, so the versions will be used also on there. So it's kind of bringing immutability to Word, WordPress world, which is kind of also on Node.js and Angular world, immutability is the way to go. So whatever you do, it just works. And uh, one particular thing on this uh, Frontix template is that we've made it also impossible, so it makes this Heroku file system read only for the WordPress directory, so, so you would just see some errors if you try to update anything. But that's a minor detail. And second most important thing is that we are using the same same tool chain that Heroku uses to run PHP apps. Uh, so this uh, PHP tool chain, so it's built back on Heroku. So it needs Nginx web server uh, with this configuration. And this real IP is basically used so that you can use this HTTP header uh, remote address for the true users address, uh, not any load balancers or CDNs address, so it's only doing that. 
And then also on this uh, instructions, I'm using uh, node module reverse proxy, and I will tell later why, why I need to use this, but uh, it's related to the multi-site. So usually on this time, if I would have installed those, I need to some time, time to test those, but luckily for you, I did this testing already back on that table one hour ago, so everything works, or it should be. All right, so then it, uh, it's time to set up the development repository. So let's just do that. Let's call our site uh, wordcamp.frc.io. I have already set up all the name services, so it will also work without any hassle. All right. I'll just remove the git there and add n file to this git ignore. So I can look the example n file here. What's there? So, so basically, well, I'm creating empty git <coughs> repository and then just committing everything. So this. Uh, This uh, commit is only needed, needed for me, so uh, Heroku uses uh, Git uh, for transporting the data there, so I will need everything committed here. And after that, then I have to set up the local environment, so, so I, I won't set up everything that I regularly would use locally, so I don't set up uh, local Redis, I am not set up in uh, these uh, S3 buckets to be used on local development. Those can be done just later on Heroku side. So, so I'm just basically putting this uh, very, very simple configuration. Configuration to my N file. So now I have the local environment. And obviously I need to create a MySQL database. And actually update it so that I can use it here. And I also created this localhost.frc.io. If you wonder what's it all about, so it's uh, fully qualified domain name pointing to your local host. It's needed uh, on our case uh, because we also have this multi-site stuff which I will be using this wildcard domain. So we have uh, everything.localhost.frc.io. But then I'm just, uh, I'm actually removing the composer.log so I can do a fresh install. So I'm going to explain while it's doing the install that what's this Composer configuration. So it's basing to the Bedrock defaults. So it has these uh, two repositories. Uh, it has these uh, Bedrock outsource sets and you can edit uh, on your project needs. But uh, as this is a boilerplate, it's using the default, so we are just following the upstream. Um, there is some repositories, uh, support forums, and other set here. 
uh, and also the repositories that it's uh, using. So on our case, uh, we have uh, our custom version of, of this Amazon S3 and CloudFront plugin. And it's uh, only because of gravity forms. So this uh, uh, Amazon S3 and CloudFront, it's nowadays it's called Offload S3. So they do have a plugin system implemented, but it's missing some of the hooks needed by Gravity Forms. So we are now using just this uh, forked version because of this, but I know we should actually make patches for the upstream so that we can get the hooks and you know, it would be the sensible thing to do as an open source developer. But let's now just use this forked version or we are not actually using it on this, but it's on the configuration. And then <coughs> this uh, Heroku build pack, it's uh, uh, added as a development requirement. So it's just uh, the same as they use on Heroku deployment side. And then there's a bunch of uh, dependencies, like we use Redis. And GD, which are bundled on the host system, so those X packages are like that. And we use a couple of caching plugins on those so Amazon web services, SendGrid for email sending, and so on. And those VP N packages are just uh, helper packages that can be used to expose something that's on Heroku configuration, which is a regular environment, like on my local .env. But, uh, but it's basically Heroku specific. So, so if this would be, for example, a Docker uh, project, then probably we would need to implement similar kind of helper packages for Docker. So we can use those built-in built in, uh, bundles on Docker. And we are using, <coughs> using PHP version 5.6 and WordPress version 4.3.1 or equivalent. Then there are some post and update and post in install uh, hooks. So, so many of you who are deeper in technical uh, knowledge of WordPress. So WordPress has a pretty sophisticated caching system. And on our case, we are using bad cache and object cache. So we are just copying uh, the files uh, from this Composer installed packages into place so that the WordPress can use those. And this sunrise.php is related to the multi-site configuration. So it's used to use a real uh, domain name. So we have uh, something dot uh, localhost.frc.io. So with this uh, uh, MU uh, domains uh, plugin we can hook that we have www.something.com which is equals as some some subdomain. Sub and then there is uh, installer parts defined so so basically it just defines that if you have those uh, WordPress MU, MU plugins uh, it puts them under web app uh, MU plugins regular plugins, under plugins, and teams under web app teams. And WordPress is installed under web slash WordPress. Uh, previously, people have used more like something like public for the entire web route and, and WordPress installation directory as WordPress. All right. So Composer install should have been done here. So yes, it's ready now. Uh, and I need to need to add now this, uh, as I previously told, that I need this uh, reverse proxy. So it was here. It wasn't actually here, so yeah, so I need to uh, run sudo for this reverse proxy. So basically this WordPress multi-site, it's uh, uh, if I use uh, uh, subdomains, uh, for the moment, it cannot use any port on it. So you can use regular HTTP or HTTPS, but you are not able to use any custom port like, like on locally. I usually use port 5000 for some reason. But on this case, we use reverse proxy to, 
do the proxying. I don't want to run any PHP stuff really with root privileges. So we just reverse proxy. All right, so it's listening there. And then I'm now, I, I have now this uh, composer installation done here, so well, loads of stuff installed, so I can just run this local Heroku environment, which is part of this Heroku build pack, which was installed here. All right, so it works. So I can go now to my local host fsc.io. Actually, now we have the first demo effect, so I need to do Redis uh, plus all Redis CLI. So I forgot that actually this uh, composer did, it did copy those CASIs in place, so I'm really using now also locally this Redis. All right, so let's put a good title and then just some password. Talking about good passwords. That's why I have one password. All right, and, and logging in. Yeah, I have now local WordPress running. I don't have any multi-site related stuff yet. So here comes the configuration, so basically, uh, I'm gonna now uncomment to basically allow this WordPress. So, so I have uh, made those changes on the bedrock template, so I can use a little bit less of these multi-site related configurations. So, it's just easing the installation, and it's uh, also also described on the next slides. So, let's go quickly through. The enabling the multi-site. So when we actually enable this environment uh, variable, uh, then <coughs> this uh, there on on this config slash application .php file, which is part of Bedrock's uh, modular system, then it's basically well, it's only setting the VP internal. Uh, flag allowing the multi-site through, so it doesn't do anything but that. But the other configuration variable, this VP multi-site main domain, it, uh, it's actually setting more like I, I did put this. Uh, if it's set, so then it uh, set multi-site through, subdomain install through, and doma domain current site uh, as this main domain. And it also sets uh, the path as slash and also this default site ID will be the number one, so it's the first site that you have created. But I guess we just, we just now stop this Heroku local and then allow the multi-site and run it again. I guess I'm opening a secondary browser if I can. Uh, so, all right, so now in the tools I have network set up here. 
and on the network setup, all what this does is to add the multi-site related configuration to this VP's database. So it doesn't do anything else. You have to, on regular multi-site setups, you would have to do everything this manually, uh, like this. So you would have to copy paste this, but uh, on our case, it's already on this bedrock boilerplate. So, so then I can just go back here and comment. Uh, oh, this was the reverse proxy. So I will uncomment the last one, which sets the main domain and get this Heroku global running again. And now I actually have to do re-login. So, yes, now I have this network admin enabled and multi-site is totally configured. And I can start adding a couple of sites here, so, so let's add something, something and something else. And I can actually go directly there, so, so you can see that it's uh, else.localhost.frc.io, so, so this is a sub-sites admin. So it works. All right, so pretty much uh, the thing is already done on locally. So we have the main site, which, which has a uh, the multi-site multi admin and, and also controlling to create new sites and so on. And then this site one, site two, uh, with this uh, site admin rights, uh, you are able to do uh, as much as everything that you would regularly do with uh, this kind of regular single site WordPress sites. So it isn't that different. But of course, now the domain is anything.localhost.frc.io. So for actually, actually, if you want to lo locally test that everything works, so then uh, you are in luck. You can uh, uh, enable this uh, Sunrise, the, uh, this uh, WordPress MU domain mapping plugin. You can activate it also locally, and you will then have a domain settings. So you can set, for example, that this uh, I happen to know that uh, this something dot localhost dot frc dot io uh, it has uh, this ID 11. So I will put just the ID 11 there, and I will put, put for example. WorkCamp.org there and make it the primary site. So it means that it will use only this www.wordcap.org there. Now that's not on any domain name, so it's only demonstrating how it works locally. So don't be afraid. Nothing can go wrong. So I'm just editing my local host file. So you can actually, with this kind of approach, you can develop everything locally and only deploy it when you need. So, and then it's uh, www.wordcamp.org. So I'm overriding locally this uh, regular name services. So, and then if I go there, so it will then, whoa. This is actually the main site. Ah, actually, I <coughs> 
Yeah, it's actually number two. So I made a mistake there. So www.workcamp.org and then put it there. Yes, it's again this. Yeah, but uh, well, I guess it should have been site ID 2. Well, at least this works on Heroku. I tested this, so I didn't test it locally, so maybe I should have tested it. So I'm removing this line from my local configuration, and we could actually go uh, how to deploy it on Heroku. So this first part on creating this app, I already did it just so that I have my local privileges correct. Uh, so let's go to the WorkCamp. So here we just, we would say this create, but, uh, but it's already there, so I'm adding then uh, a remote, remote add, and it's called Heroku. Regular Heroku will add it if you have this cheat repository initialized uh, by itself, and the app is named WordCamp. And then I update the remotes. Right, and I'm just looking that do I have anything? So I have one web server there, so I'm putting it off. Just a, a kind of good practice that if you uh, publish a WordPress uh, somewhere without actually having the data there, so obviously it will display this registration screen. So it's kind of good that you don't allow anybody to go there, just to kind of do, and I will also add uh, add-ons. I needed this uh, MySQL, so it's ClearDB on, on Heroku, so I'm adding one. And then I'm adding the ready, so. so these two are something that we need because we have those uh, installation, post installation and post update hooks on place. All right, so afterwards we have now added those, so then it's about the end. So we need to add those VP allow multi-site and VP multi-site main domain to Heroku. At the moment, our configuration, it only includes the database-related stuff. So, so I'm just re-adding the same that I have locally there. And VP multi-site main domain. But uh, on this Heroku case, obviously, this local host doesn't work there. Since it's localhost, it's not anything on the internet, it's your own machine. So I have made wordcamp.frc.io, which I can use there. And I already have this local setup done, so I don't want to do it twice. So one of my colleagues has uh, made a Heroku plugin that automates uh, deploying the local database back and forth to Heroku. So on, so on our, our case, I'm pushing the local WordCamp database and doing a, a doing a, the search and replace there. So I'm replacing all localhost.frc.io, basically this word, 
uh, on the database with wordcamp.frc.io. So the search and replace is something that you could run standalone. So it only, only does uh, this calculating the serialization parameters, which are uh, WordPress specific. So localhost, FRC IO, and WordCamp FRC IO. And it was this helper script was kind enough to read the environment for, from Heroku, so it will use the credentials that, uh, well, you can see on the screen, so if you are quick enough, you can uh, go with your MySQL client and put something there, just if you want. So how it uh, works in practice, so it does uh, loads of things like dumping and running the search and replace stuff, so, but uh, plain and simple, it's, uh, it's installable as a Heroku plugin, so it's fairly easy to use compared to doing, doing the manual com command line steps. All right, so I'm just closing these local ones. Now as we move to do the remaining stuff on Heroku. All done. So if everything went fine, I can now just uh, scale it up. And um, well, I have to add the domains. WordCamp, FRC, IO, and also this wildcard domain. So this is also Heroku specific thing. So now if we go to WordCamp, FRC, IO, it should have the site there, yes. The site mentioned that, well, uh, I, ha I don't have SSL certificate, so, so you should use SSL, but you need to install the certificate manually. So on my case, I, I'm going to destroy the app. So, so this is just to demonstrate how it works. So basically, all the data that I have locally is now on Heroku. And obviously, for the sites, yeah, something.wordcramp.frc.io, it works. Um, let's look if the plugins, yes, it's already active. Oh, network active. Somehow, actually, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so basically, I'm now missing. So, uh, probably I will just just do a so. These are the usual things that when you do something and you vari variate, then uh, it doesn't work as uh, as it worked when you tried it the first time. All right, and then WordCamp, and then I run Heroku Local here, and open this. And then I have to... Ah, now I actually got it, so I have to go to Network Admin. Yeah, here. Yeah, it was here. All right, so, so I'm just adding one site here so we can have the remaining time. So I have prepared something nice. So I'm using a custom domain.
now it's number 11. So I should be able to do this now. So I have WordCamp axurules.com set. Now it's actually added it. So, so obviously I'm going to check that why it didn't work locally. But uh, it might have to do that this uh, MU plugins, MU domains plugin actually does a DNS lookup. So if it does so, then well, you cannot do anything, anything for this but to have a local uh, DNS server, of course. Um, well, I only now need to add domains. This word camp. Dot, uh, axrules.com. Axu is, by the way, my brand, band mate. I made this uh, axrules.com domain as his uh, birthday present some time ago. So if it now works, you will see the page. Axu rules, yes. Now it worked. So, so basically, uh, this uh, dev DevOps stuff with uh, WordPress is pretty fancy if you have this kind of tool. So this is uh, uh, two important pa parts on, on this uh, tool set. So it's this Heroku build pack and the second part is the bedrock. So it makes you that you can run almost uh, identical environments locally and on Heroku and do syncing back and forth. So, so I've used it, uh, for example, to do some customer requested changes that are very time consuming to do like input in the content. I do it locally and then I can just with the button or press I can push it live. Obviously there would be some other methods to do that uh, with WordPress but, but uh, it's kind of very convenient that you can preview everything. Um, well you could also use a staging site if you have one so then the customer can actually input the data there and then use the same uh, Joseph's uh, ClearDB dump tool to pull it and push it to another Heroku app so, so it would work perfectly on this. And the multi-site stuff is generally, it works with uh, this uh, a wildcard domain but uh, it doesn't work that we pretty well uh, on the other way. So the other way on doing multi-sites uh, on practical level would be to have yoursite.com slash multisite URL. So unfortunately, it doesn't work that easily. And the reason is that on, on this bedrock, uh, WordPress is installed to a separate directory. So if you would have a regular WordPress setup that you have uh, WordPress installed on your web route, then you can use this alternative method. And it's actually how the Docker uh, container instructions they are using a WordPress installed in, in this default location. So with Docker instances, you could also use this other, other one. But I guess let's use the remaining time for questions. I guess there might be a few. Thank you, you'll see. Uh, we're running a bit late, so we've got time for just a couple of questions. Anyone? Ooh, there's one over there in the third row. Uh, oh, yeah, over there. So you guys are running uh, WordPress on Heroku in production right now? Yes. So what's the rationale behind that? Is, has it been working great for you? Do you? Would you recommend doing that for other companies maybe? Is it, does it scale well? Yeah, it's been uh, working pretty well. So, so ba basically it enables us to optimize the performance in great detail. So we can basically use variety of services. Uh, like this Redis, and previously we used this uh, Memcuck here, which is Memcuck headspace service. So, so we can use that kind of stuff and also implement if some customer, for example, has very, very heavy uh, menu system, we can implement transients based on this and optimize them so that we can basically, basically test it, it, it in advance. Uh, and why we are using those caches is uh, just that we can scale it up so we can tell that run with 10 workers or right, so. Right, so you, you can use caches. Uh, my question was more about have you run into any issues with the performance of Heroku? Because I've 
had quite a lot of people complain about how the routing system works with Heroku and it doesn't really fit with MySQL applications and PHP applications, for example, with sessions. That's a big thing with Heroku, I think. The sessions are really shared between the, uh, what were they called, instances in Heroku. Yeah, so far, there hasn't been any session-related stuff, so basically Heroku has their own load balancer, so, so it kind of works uh, out of the box. But of course, there's always uh, these cases that, uh, that, for example, one client wanted to have that uh, you do this SSL login for regular users, but use the same session on HTTP site. And their rationale was that their advertising, uh, this aggregator, uh, they had ads with used, used HTTP links, so, so they lost some revenue because of HTTPS, and obviously it is, well, everybody is moving to HTTPS, so definitely it's not an issue in a couple of years. Okay, uh, one more question. Are there any stairs? Up, oh, over there. Uh, how you manage uh, multiple local uh, WordPress installation in this kind of setup when you install Brew, uh, the web server through Brew? Uh, so if I'm running multi-sites, obviously I have to have to basically point this uh, reverse proxy only to one local address. But I can have easily dozen of uh, this Heroku local instances running, so it will just uh, look uh, look for the next available port starting from this 5000, or you can define it with just just port, whatever you want. So, so it, nobody is actually limiting you to use this local host uh, uh, on any port, but it's only this multi-site that it doesn't support the port. So, so I'm actually thinking of uh, contributing to the WordPress core so that we could get the ports also some, at least intranets would benefit on, on having different than default port. Thank you very much, Jussi. Uh, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs>